Let's review the gauges on the dash cluster. In the top left corner is engine coolant, below is hydraulic temp, on the right fuel level, and if equipped, diesel exhaust fluid level and torque converter temperature. Now we'll cover the indicator lights on the display, starting at the top left-hand corner, working in a clockwise pattern. Left-hand turn signal, right-hand turn signal, engine emission system failure, brake warning, economy mode, lift control float, regeneration status, high exhaust temperature, ride control, implement lockout, reduced rim pull, engine failure lamp, and primary steering pressure. In the center left, you have the action lamp and park brake indicators. The digital display shows gear, direction, ground speed, and service meter hours. It also indicates if the following features are active. Throttle lock, auto shift, engine idle shutdown, delayed engine shutdown, seat belt is on, lockup clutch, and if a regeneration has been canceled. The right hand cab post contains controls for the front wiper, rear wiper, automatic temperature control, temperature setting, fan control, running light switch, work light switch, HID lights if equipped, the stairway light switch, beacon switch if equipped, and hazard lights. K-Series large wheel loaders are equipped with a soft keypad. Here the operator can adjust several machine settings. Let's review each button. Starting at the top left, Auto Shift has two modes. In mode one, you will notice that the machine will start out in first gear. By pressing Auto Shift again, you are now in Auto 2, driving the machine to start out in second gear. Below, you can use the up and down arrows to select your max gear that the machine will shift into. Next is the lockup clutch button. This disables second gear lockup only on the loader. Following this is rim pull control. When all three lights are on, you have 100% rim pull. As you push the button and turn lights out, you are reducing rim pull. Again, when all three lights are on, you have 100% rim pull. The next button is ride control. This turns your ride control system on and off. Following this are your kickouts. The first is your upper kickout. Press and hold the button until it blinks and beeps. The second is your return to dig kick out. This sets the level of your bucket edge. If equipped, following your return to dig kick out is your heated mirror. You can also adjust the backlight intensity by hitting the last button and dimming the lights. Moving on to the second row, you have throttle lock on or off. As an operator, if you choose to set throttle lock, you have to turn this button on to set your engine RPM. For machines equipped with an auto lube system, the next button allows you to force the auto lube to grease while you're in the cab so you can verify the system is working properly. The next button is your lower kick out. This stops the linkage at the lower position by holding down until it beeps. Then you have economy mode. By hitting the eco button, this actually provides throttle on demand for the operator. Engine speed is controlled automatically. The last button on the keypad is the help assist. By pushing the question mark button, you can actually hit a button that you want to learn about on the keypad, and it will give you a description on the bottom of the touch screen. The graphical information display has two home screens. Default, as shown here, is the quad gauge showing machine parameters. The second is a work monitor providing real-time fuel burn and lifetime average. If equipped, production information is also displayed. 
Now let's review the navigation buttons on the outside of the screen. The first is display settings. Returning to the home screen, we have machine settings, followed by totals, and then service, and lastly, operator on the right hand side. The last shortcut button on the left side is for payload. Located at the bottom of the touchscreen is the information banner. Now let's review the payload home screen and the information that is available to you as the operator. Number one displays the total of the material loaded into the truck. The smaller number indicates the number of passes in the truck. Bucket weight will instantly transfer to the truck when the scale weight is calculated. Number two displays the weight of material currently in the bucket. Number three displays the remaining weight needed to achieve the target payload for the currently selected truck. Number four is bucket zero. Use to zero a bucket on startup when prompted or when carryback is occurring and not able to be removed. Number five is estimated weight. Number six is material ID load site ID select. Number seven is truck ID select. Number eight is the delay code button. Number nine is minus one pass and truck clear. Number 10 is the store button. This should be pressed at the end of a truck to store the data to memory and update lifetime and trip payload totals. Below the keypad, you have the electro hydraulic or EH park brake and the implement lockout switch. To the right is the machine ignition. To crank the engine, turn the key to the far right. When shutting down the machine, turn the key to the 12 o'clock position. In certain situations, the machine will continue to idle, cool down, and purge diesel exhaust fluid back to tank. Only in an emergency shutdown situation should you turn the key to the orange position or 11 o'clock. Also on the dash if equipped, is the tier four regeneration switch. Leave this switch in automatic. If the machine is key cycled, it will return to the auto by default. Only in certain situations do you want to take the machine out of automatic regeneration mode. The right hand armrest or implement pod has the following controls. Throttle lock, resume or excel. Throttle lock set and decel the payload store button if equipped, the turn signals, the horn button, the tilt and lift lever, and both are equipped with soft detents. The left hand armrest contains a steering lock. Now in the unlock position, the operator is able to articulate the machine side to side. He can also upshift by hitting the upper yellow button and downshift on the lower. On the bottom side of the joystick is the forward neutral reverse switch, F and R. Large wheel loaders are equipped with three pedals on the floor. The first one on the left is the impeller clutch torque converter pedal or ICTC. This pedal actually controls rim pull or power that is applied to the ground while using the loader. As you push in on the pedal, it cuts rim pull and effectively reduces tire spin while loading the bucket. The last 10% of travel is actually brake. ICTC is very important during normal operation. It allows the operator to modulate the machine during directional changes, enables smooth transitions during the work cycle, prevents tire spin, and balances rim pull with hydraulic power while digging with the bucket. The next pedal in line is the service brake pedal. This allows the operator to stop the machine at any time. On the far right, you have the throttle pedal. 
This allows the operator to manually control engine speed during operation. The upper touchscreen display houses the rear vision camera, which is a standard feature on large wheel loaders. If equipped, the machine may also have cat detect that will give the operator warning of any objects in his or her rear path. K-Series large wheel loaders are equipped with a standard delayed engine shutdown. When the operator turns the engine off by turning the key to the 12 o'clock position, the machine will go into delayed engine shutdown mode. The operator should not override this feature. As shown on the display, you can see that the machine is in shutdown delay, do not override. Only in a safety emergency situation should the operator turn the key to the 11 o'clock position and override the shutdown. When the operator turns throttle lock on and sets the engine RPM at a higher level, after five seconds of inactivity, the machine will kick to low idle. When the operator goes back to work on the implement pod, engine speed will resume automatically as shown here. Every machine has a corresponding operation and maintenance manual or OMM. These manuals contain warning sections on how the machine should or should not be used. The OMM is located in the literature holder or seat back storage area. The operator should become thoroughly familiar with its content before operating the wheel loader initially.